Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we are starting a brand new unit. So we are on unit five, lesson one. And today we're gonna to talk about currents, waves, and tides. Now, the good news about this is that we've already talked about the tides when we did unit one astronomy. So the tides portion should definitely just be a review for you today. Um, so the currents and the waves will be the new um, content that we're gonna be going over. As always, you should have downloaded your interactive notebook pages for today, and these particular notes will coincide with those. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing we're going to do today is talk about ocean currents. Now we know that ocean water is salty, so there is salt that's dissolved into our ocean water. And we also know that the water in the ocean is constantly moving. Um, so if you think about if you've ever been swimming in the ocean, um, you might go into the beach at one particular place and then you know you start playing around and swimming around and then next thing you know you look up and you're a little bit further down the shore. Well, you've been pulled by the motion of the currents and the motion that's created from the tides as well. So we're going to find out what moves those ocean currents today. So on the surface, we do see the water moving in the form of waves, and below the surface, the water moves in currents. So the movement on top are the waves, and below are the currents. Ocean currents are moving streams of water within the ocean. If you guys have ever seen Finding Nemo, which I'm sure you have, um, but the current that the turtles ride in, <laughs> where they jump in and they take the the um, Gulf Stream to get where they want to go. That is a pretty good depiction of that, actually. Um, it's harder to see it in the ocean itself, but they are moving streams of water. So there are two types of ocean currents we need to know about. There are surface currents at the top, and these are the currents that move on or near the surface of the ocean. And then there are the deep currents um, that are caused by discrepancies in water density and that moves deeper down below the surface. So surface currents have three factors that control them. So there's air currents, just wind, um, the rotation of the earth, and remember the rotation is the spinning of earth on its axis, and then also the location of the continents. So all surface currents are affected by wind and which direction they're blowing. And then the continents themselves will act as barriers to the major surface currents. So if you think of flowing water, if it hits the land and it hits the shore, it's going to be redirected because it can't keep flowing through the land that it's meeting. So when current flows against a continent, the current is deflected and it's also divided. So it dissipates and it moves um, in opposite directions once it hits the land. And this is just a visual of the movement of currents. So we see the currents that are in red are warm water currents, so they will be warmer in temperature. And then in blue, we see those cold water currents as well. So if we follow them, we can see which direction um, these currents will be moving in. So we can expect to see the streams of water following um, these particular directions and the movements on this, on this map. And what we're also going to find out, we're not going to talk about the winds today, um, but when we talk about the winds themselves in the atmosphere, we're going to find that a lot of these currents do coincide with which way the winds are blowing as well. So deep currents, as opposed to the surface currents, they are water density movement currents. So the differences in water density will move these currents. So cold water is more dense and it will sink as it moves, okay? So cold water will become more dense and it will fall as it cools down. Warm water is less dense and it will also rise up. So how does this sound familiar? We should be, you know, we should have light bulbs going off in our head right now saying, oh wait, I've seen this before. You know, something heats up and it rises and it gets to the top and then it cools down and it sinks back down and it moves in this conveyor belt motion. This is just like the convection currents in the mantle, okay? Our ocean currents move in a similar way. So as the water heats up, it will rise. If it cools down, it will sink back down and we have this movement of these currents from this convection. Um, now, the surface currents, 
will travel faster than the deep currents. So the currents that are closer to the top, they will travel faster than the deep water currents do. But we just need to understand the movement of this water. So we have our surface currents that carry the warm, less dense water from the equator to the poles. And then the warm water from the surface currents will replace cold, dense water, and it will sink to the ocean floor. And then the deep currents will carry the colder, denser water, and then eventually it will warm up and rise. So this creates something called a global conveyor belt, and we will watch this video um, in our Zoom meeting, but if you're watching this by yourself, you can um, watch this on your own. Um, but basically, what happens is just like the mantle moves our plates like a conveyor belt, this temperature discrepancy also moves our currents like a conveyor belt. So around the equator, there's more radiation and the water will heat up and warm up and then the currents will push the water towards the poles where there's less radiation and that's where that water loses that temperature, becomes colder and more dense and sinks down. So it moves kind of like a conveyor belt. Oops. I did not want to play this. Stop, pause. <laughs> okay. Let's move on. Okay, so now that we've talked about our currents, we're going to talk about waves. Um, and I'm sure you guys have seen waves either in movies, on the ocean, or if you've been to the ocean yourself. So a wave is just a rhythmic movement that carries energy through matter or space. In oceans, waves move through seawater. And these waves are caused by three things, wind, earthquakes, and the gravitational force of the moon and the sun. So there are parts of a wave we need to know about. The crest is the highest point of the wave. The trough is the lowest point of the wave. Wave height is measured by the vertical distance between the crest and the trough. And wave height, um, when we say vertical distance, that's up and down. And then wavelength is the horizontal distance between two crests or two troughs. And then um, horizontal is left to right movement. So we do need to look at this and be able to um, identify the different parts of a wave. So the crest is the upper part. The trough is the lower part. Okay, so our wave height is measured from the bottom here to the top of our crest. And then the wavelength is measured from crest to crest. So if we were going to measure our wavelength, we would need to measure left to right, the horizontal distance from here to here. Okay. Um, so when a wave passes through the ocean, individual water molecules move up and down, but they don't move forward and backwards. Okay. So as the wave moves through the ocean, the movement is up and down, not forward and back. However, when the wave breaks against the shore, the crest will actually outrun the trough and the crest will collapse. This is called a breaker. That's a, probably the wave that you think of in your mind because when you go to the beach, you're on the shore and you are seeing the waves that are breaking. So in this case, the water does move forward and backwards, but as it moves through the ocean itself, unless it's breaking on the shore, um, it only moves up and down, not forward and back. So waves are caused by wind, and we'll talk more about wind in this unit, but the height of a wave will really depend on the wind speed, so how fast is the wind blowing, the distance over which the wind blows, and also the length of time that the wind blows as well. So we've talked about ocean currents, we've talked about the waves, the last thing we need to review are the tides, and again this should be a review from unit one. So a tide is a periodic rise and fall of the sea level under the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon. So remember, both the sun and the moon do impact the, um, the height of our tides, but the moon has a greater pull because the moon is closer to the earth. The sun is larger than the moon, but it's also further away. So the moon impacts us the most. So thus, an alternating pattern of rising and falling sea level with respect to land is what we know as the tides. And during high tide, the water level is, is at its highest, and during low tide, it's at its lowest. So the moon's gravity will pull the water on Earth towards it, and the water moves up into a slight bulge on the side of the Earth that faces the moon. And remember, this also happens on the opposite side of the Earth. So there are two big bulges of water 
um, on the earth, one directly under the moon and one on the exact opposite side. And remember, these are called the tidal bulges. So there are two types of tides. Remember, this is a review. There are neap tides and then there are spring tides. So the neap tides occur when you have the earth, the sun, and the moon in a 90 degree angle from each other or in a perpendicular position. So we've got our sun and our earth and then our moon could either be here or on the bottom as well. And when this happens, you've got the gravity of the sun and the moon working opposite each other. So in here, in this instance, we would have a um, lower high tide and a higher low tide. So the differences between the tides would not be as great um, because really the sun and the moon's gravity are working against each other. On the other hand, with a spring tide, when we have the earth, the moon, and the sun all in a line with each other, this is when you get your really, really high tides and your really, really low tides because the gravity of the sun and the moon are working together rather than opposite of each other. And so they're both working in the same position on earth. So we're getting those super high tides then. And then this is just a time lapse video showing you guys the rising and the falling of the tides. Okay, so the tides were a review, the spring and the neap tides from unit one. Um, and then we do need to know about the surface currents and the deep currents. So the surface currents run on top and the deep currents are further below the ocean surface, um, and those are moved by density dependent factors, meaning that the warmer water is less dense and on top, and then the cooler water is more dense and on the bottom. And then we do need to know the components of a wave, and we need to know that unless the wave is a breaker that's breaking on the shore, the water molecules in a wave are moving up and down, but they are not moving forward and backwards, okay? So that is our intro to our oceans. Remember, the ocean is salty. Um, and there is a lot more to come in this unit. But if you have any questions um, and you just need to, you know, talk about anything, reach out to me, let me know. And if not, I will catch you in the next one.